hope you are doing well. This is something completely off the cuff today. I am making dinner for six for Father's Day. My dad, my brother, my sister, my sister's boyfriend, my grandmom, and me. Before we get started with all of the stuff I'm gonna make today, let me go back yesterday and show you what I prepped up. Okay, so the day prior, don't ask me where this came from. Someone put a very hot pan on our table. The first thing we're gonna prep is a green bean salad inspired by both my grandmom and a recipe from Anthony Bourdain's cookbook. Two bags of green beans, I'm not sure exactly how much, but I get the tips off of every single one. We get a pot of boiling water and heavily seasoned with salt and the green beans go in. I give them a toss just to get them all happy. The bigger the pot, the better. While that's boiling, we take one red onion. It's seen better days, but I think we could salvage it. And I thinly slice this with the grain as to hopefully not disrupt too many little onion cells, creating a more pungent flavor. And then here comes in Bourdain. We take a clove of garlic and separate it from the shell, whatever that stuff's called. I get about a carton of tomatoes and slice these in half and then lengthwise again to create a similar thickness as the red onions. As I'm totally in the flow here, vibing out, slicing up some vegetables, the freaking green beans got overcooked. The idea of blanching is to ice them before they cook too far, and I iced them after they cook too far already. We take that garlic and we rub that all around our salad bowl. I add about three tablespoons of olive oil, roughly a half cup of lemon juice, and a splash of red wine vinegar, white pepper, and very little salt. We whisk this together and magically it emulsifies. I think the garlic is a key factor there. The onions go in, the tomatoes go in, and I cheat and add a little sugar here to just break things down more and sweeten up this vinaigrette dressing kind of thing we got going on. The beans have dried off, have cooled, and they're going to go in the fridge cupboard, and our dressing mixture is finished as well. Next up, it's time to make hopefully the best damn potatoes I have ever had in my life. I'm going to peel eight pounds of Yukon gold potatoes using that fancy little tool to get out the gross parts, and then roughly chop these. I don't want to go too small because you are going to see these potatoes will break down, which is what we want. We get a big pot and add half a teaspoon of baking soda and what would be about two big fat pinches of salt. Bring that up to a rolling boil and cook half of the potatoes in this water. Realizing I overfilled the water, so evasive maneuvers here. After about 10 minutes simmering, these will be tender, hopefully when a paring knife goes in. If not, you can just give them a little more time. They will have an almost crumbly like texture you're gonna notice and from here we're going to strain them. I give them a little toss and this actually helps increase the surface area of the potatoes. And as you can see, these have an almost mashed like little exterior to them. That is from the baking soda breaking down the starch and now that will get crispier in the oven than your traditional non baking soda boiled potatoes. So here is the fun part. We get duck fat from a past dish I made, duck a l'orange with Anthony Bourdain's cookbook. Again, if you're noticing a theme here, I cook through the homies book and he actually makes a side note to save the duck fat if possible because it makes amazing potatoes. We warm up the fat and add about two sprigs of rosemary and three to four sliced up pieces of garlic with about a handful of whole black peppercorns. We let that simmer for a while until the garlic starts to get a nice little color to it and this oil gets very aromatic and then we simply strain the oil. That looks heavenly. Thinking about it further, you could probably use cheesecloth to save yourself from those little black bits and our second round of the potatoes are finished cooking and we dump them off in a pan to dry and cool completely. So we have everything prepped up for the day to follow. The green bean salad, the potatoes, and we are ready to rock. Now we're gonna work on the steaks. These are the steaks from Anthony Bourdain's cookbook. I actually made this whole recipe to begin. 20 peeled freaking shallots. Bang, into an oven safe cast iron skillet. And with that, we're gonna add butter. I think this is four tablespoons. And then we just wrap this with aluminum foil. 325 for about 45 minutes to an hour slicely thin some shallots. By the way, if you're trying to win this freaking knife, I'm doing a giveaway. I'll link the video to the giveaway either up here or down below in the description. Just as sharp as I remember it. I freaking love shallots and I think everyone else will too. We can temper our steaks. These are six perfect portion sirloins. You can use fillets, but these are like a fraction of the price. And I think they have more flavor and a little more chew. And um, I don't have a lot of money. That's what it comes down to. So. You might want to say a little more chew for your buck. <laughs> what was that? You want to say that again? Chew for your buck. <laughs> what is that? I, chew I, I, for your buck as yeah, in? More chew, because you said there's more chew. So more chew for your buck. Get it? No. What I'm gonna do to allow these to temper and dry, I'm just gonna lay out a little paper towel and we're gonna get these bad boys out. Little trick I've been doing is keeping one hand clean while I get the other one dirty. I'm gonna pat these out. I'm gonna let these hang out for an hour and I will go put these off in an undisclosed location. I love it. We're gonna use the small oven because we have to roast these potatoes in our big oven. Let's get a sexy reveal. They're completely not ready, but that's quite all right. 
<laughs> no, it's not. Will that fit? I'll answer that question, no. That is open at a 45 degree angle, so we're gonna have to increase that by about 50 degrees, okay? The potatoes, they gotta go in the big oven, 450 degrees for about an hour. We're gonna toss these in that freaking sexy duck oil fat I made yesterday. Put about half of our mixture in there. Oh, sweet Moses. Mm, just give them a nice little toss. The idea is to actually toss them up so they get a little crumbly and jacked up. The idea is that there's now a lot of exterior to get crunchified as opposed to not par baking them. Just get them even out. It kind of looks like a strange, almost like potato salad. And we're gonna do this with the other pan. Now we're just gonna hit them with some salt. Making a mess, I don't care. These will go in the oven for about 20 minutes. And now we gotta free up the spuds with a spatula. They're gonna need much more time, but they're getting there. So that's it, everything's really contingent upon those spuds getting crispy. They're a little too soggy in my opinion, but we'll catch up with them in like 30 minutes. And then once they're like damn near close to being done, then we can cook the steaks and that's it really. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna get our broccoli cooking off. Balls and screw it, that'll work. Here is how the spuds are looking. They're finally getting nice and crispy in some serious crusty exterior there. They need more, but Brain Blast, Alakaden, my recorder. We can actually cook these on the same rack. Perfect. They need a little more time, but the steaks have to cook at a lower temperature than the potatoes. So, 375. Just gonna open this, get some nice, fresh, duck fried potato air in here and let the oven cool down in temperature a little bit. This is a technique learned in France to cool down the oven. Okay, we're just seasoning these bad boys. Season with salt and pepper pretty liberally, like a, like a foot above. Okay, just give them a nice pat down. All right, this is like the sexy moment. Just get some oil in both pans, dance around. And we're gonna sear these mother truckers. This is where it gets all fun and chaotic. A little test, see how they look. Looks good to me. And then dollop of butter to baste them for like two to three minutes. Already I can tell the heat's a little too hot. Kaden, my cameraman, would agree it just got really freaking hot in here. Potatoes are looking damn good. Oh yeah. Look at my face. I'm sweating like a dang hot person. <laughs> These four steaks are gonna be medium rare-ish. These two steaks I'm gonna shoot for Medium well, well done. Eh, the bottom could use more, but. And then we get these bad boys in the oven. They're gonna hang out in there for like seven minutes. That's just enough time to dab my face with an entire beach towel. We gotta be making the sauce while the steaks are cooking. Discard the fat from the large saute pan and add the butter. Heat over medium flame and when hot, add the shallot. Cook for a few minutes. While the shallots are cooking off, we're gonna take those bean greens that we cooked already. Dump them in there. Marinated Johns. I don't know why I did that. Just give it a toss. These gosh dang green beans I overcooked. And there's our green bean salad. Shallots are looking sexy. Flour and cook for two to three minutes. Check on our steaks. The ones on the left, these four should be about medium rare-ish. Whew, that one's rare. Actually, we're gonna let that have a little more time. Let those vibe out for like three more minutes. The pork goes in. Reduce the wine by half, then add the stock. And our secret ingredient, demi glace. I'm gonna add three of these. I think four is a little mucho. All right, let's check on the steaks again, Ski. I'm happy with that under there. So the way to test if a steak's done, you can use this little like finger trick. That's like well done. That's like rare. That feels like a solid medium well. That feels like Shoe leather, soon to be. And the one my grandmother will have will go back in the oven. And I'm actually gonna turn off the oven. Now all we're doing is reducing the sauce by half. Yeah, let's get this sexy shot, shall we? Boop -ba 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 -ba. Sexy sauce with shallots, getting strained through a tiny strainer. I should have bought a bigger one, but I forgot. Gosh, I just got hit. Blasted with flames. We're gonna add steak juice to the sauce. 
a very small piece of butter. Off heat, we're gonna whisk that in. It is now time to serve everything up. Green bean salad. Yeet. Overcooked, but that's okay. I'm giving you a workout. I know I am. The roasted shallots are finished, but I'm thinking we do something sexy and actually toss that beautiful butter stuff with our broccoli. I don't know if it's right, but kind of feels it. Oh, it's so overcooked, it hurts. Oh my gosh. This broccoli is, <laughs> this is a crime, but hey, at least there's something green on the table. It's ready. 90 years old this woman is. <laughs> Sauce. Sauce is money bags. We're going to add our roasted shallots into that sauce. It's done. Okay, this was fun. This was chaotic. Thank you for spending your time with me. If you'd like, think about subscribing, joining my journey. This was a little back to Bourdain. The book has gotten even more seasons. And until next time. All right, so my mom. No, my grandma's. <laughs> keep it going, keep it going. Good. Okay, so mm. see, the oven's got to come down. That's the problem. You can cut. <laughs>